What is up guys? I'm back with another pattern for each of them. So I have a really cool mnemonic for each of these that makes it really simple to remember a lot of the features of each disease along with the inheritance. So here are the three. It's adrenal leukodystrophy, Refsum disease, and then Zellweger syndrome. Okay, so for the first one. The first one to me is the easiest. So I want to begin by saying that all three of these kind of are on a spectrum you could say. And I know there's a lot of details about looking at uh, whether you're dealing with infantile adrenal leukodystrophy, infantile refsum disease versus adult refsum disease, and etc. But really, in a, in a general kind of outlook, there is some sort of defects in what's called in, in the PEX genes. So there's a, a generalized PEX gene, and there's various subtypes of this PEX gene. And when you alter this PEX gene, you, you begin to affect various... Um, kind of smaller subsets of genes and proteins within each of these that cause some of the symptoms. So that's the first thing to know. The next thing to know is that you have to have a kind of a general basis in knowing that peroxisomes is the site of very long chain fatty acid metabolism. Now, I want to make this clear here. Metabolism, not production. So very long chain fatty acids for that specific subtype of fatty acid is actually synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum. But the metabolism itself needs to take place in the peroxisome. And it'll be important to also know that the very long chain fatty acids use a certain protein to get into the peroxisome, which is going to be related to one of these. So let's begin looking at the mnemonics to break these down. I was struggling with remembering these because I was worried that they would ask a specific uh, disease of these three if it could come up if they wanted to be real picky. So hopefully these mnemonics will help you as much as they've helped me. So the first one is adrenal leukodystrophy. Now uh, the first thing I'm going to do right off the bat is underline adreno, underline leuco, and underline dystrophy because that pretty much tells you a lot that you need to know right off the bat. The first thing I want you to notice is the word dystrophy. Remember the, the disorders of the dystrophin that uh, you remember learning about. For example, example Becker's uh, muscular dystrophy and then um, the more severe one instead of the Becker's would be the Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And just as a little side note, I, I didn't make a video about this, but something that always helped me, which of those two are the more severe that would cause death earlier or is far more dangerous is going to be the Duchenne. The way I remember that is because Duchenne starts with a D and death starts with a D as well. So that's the more concerning one is the Duchenne mus muscular dystrophy. If you remember learning about those, you may remember that those are X-linked. Okay? And so this should help you here because dystrophy is in the word. And if you can remember the dystrophin disorders are X-linked, this goes along with that. So adrenal leukodystrophy, not infantile, I want to emphasize this is the X-linked adrenal leukodystrophy that you need to know more about, is also X-linked. So that helps you to remember that this is X-linked inheritance. This will come in handy when we're trying to look at uh, some of the symptoms as well. Now, to know the symptoms, let's just break down the word. Adreno. We're going to have an issue with the adrenal gland. So, the adrenal gland, basically this disorder is having a buildup of VLCFA, the very long chain fatty acids, and they're having a buildup in various parts of the body that are specific to this disease. So you're going to have a very long chain fatty acid buildup in the adrenal glands, which could later cause adrenal gland uh, mal for, uh, malfunction. You're going to have a buildup in the leuco, I want you when you look at leuco, I want you to think of leukocyte. And remember that leukocytes are white blood cells. So let's key into that. Leuco kind of is referring to white. So this is going to be a buildup in the white matter of the brain. White matter of brain. And then the final thing is that you could also have a buildup in the testes. Now, you'll think, why, why only the testes and not, you know, the female repro uh, organs? Well, because we said it's X-linked. So this is going to primarily present in males. And so this is going to be presenting in the testes. So how do you remember that we're going to have this in the testes? Because when you see adrenal, I want you to think that the adrenal cortex, remember, has the three different segments, the uh, glomerulosa, fasciculata, uh, reticulata. And that sex hormones can come from the adrenal cortex in the final layer of that, the reticulata. So that'll help you remember that we're dealing with sexual type things, so testes. Okay, 
So you're going to have a buildup of these three things in adrenoleukodystrophy. All right. So now let me make sure. Oh, also I want to, uh, you to know this too. The particular protein, I don't know if this was put in, uh, put in first aid in the biochem section, the particular protein altered, which is kind of common sense, ALD1, the ALD1 protein. So what does that mean? This is what is defective in this disorder, in adrenal leukodystrophy, a defective ALD1 protein. I want you to notice ALD, adrenal leukodystrophy. So you see how easy that is. The protein literally goes with the pattern, adrenoleukodystrophy. It's in the word. This protein is involved in bringing long chain fatty acids into the peroxisome. So if this is defective, you can't get long chain fatty acids into the peroxisome to break it down. Therefore, you have the buildup in the adrenal gland, in the white matter of the brain and the testes. Now think about it. What are the symptoms? Anything that alters your adrenal gland could be symptoms. Think of all the things that could present if you have an, a messed up adrenal gland. Anything that uh, when you have these buildup in the white matter of the brain, you're going to have neural uh, dysfunction. And then the testes, you could have fertility issues, etc. So that is adrenoleukodystrophy. Um, oh, and then also the last thing is that, okay, this is the protein that's defective, but let's look at the specific gene that's really causing this protein to be defective. We talked about they're calling up, they're kind of all on a sliding scale with the PEX gene as a general, but really this one is specifically the ABCD1 gene is being messed up because of this PEX gene malformation. And how do you remember this? Well, because it starts with an A, just like uh, the word adrenal leukodystrophy. So that is the details of adrenal leukodystrophy, and that's how you can remember everything. All right, so for refsum disease, when this is what I want you to do. When you see refsum disease, you need to right away think of reptile. And when I think of reptiles, I think of something like an alligator, okay? so. Why do I think of this? Because first of all, refsum kind of sounds like the word reptile. So I instantly think of an alligator to help me remember how this one is going to present. So we'll start off with the inheritance of this one. We said that adrenal leukodystrophy was X-linked inheritance, but refsum disease is going to be autosomal recessive. You're probably already thinking of how this is pretty easy to remember. R just like in refsum, or even if you remember refsum for reptile, there's an R in all of these, autosomal recessive inheritance. So that's pretty easy. So now how does this one present and kind of what is the cause of this refsum disease? So refsum disease, I think of alligator when I think of all the symptoms. If you ever look at an alligator or a crocodile, kind of at nighttime, you'll notice that their eyes kind of glow red. So they can see really well at night, but I that but basically for you, what you need to remember is that Patients with this disease can have night blindness, okay? The way that can help you kind of cue you into there's some, something going on with sight is going to be the fact that alligators' eyes glow kind of a reddish color when light is shined towards them at nighttime. So night blindness, so that'll help you. That's how, and what's going to help you with this? The fact that we remembered reptiles. We're thinking of alligators and crocodiles. The next thing is like um, alligators' legs are really short and kind of like like stumpy looking. So imagine that you could have ataxia or issues moving with this because an alligator, when they run, they kind of run in a funny way. And that should also cue you into the next symptom that you can, in this, you can have epiphyseal dysplasia. Epiphyseal dysplasia. Well, okay, the epiphyseal plates, sorry, that's supposed to be an A. The epiphyseal plates is involved with growth, so you can have issues with kind of the the length of your limbs or the growth kind of um, of your limbs. You can begin to have issues with the growth of your extremities. That should cue you in just like we talked about in ataxia. Alligator and crocodile legs are kind of short and stumpy and they look kind of strange, too short for basically the size of how big an alligator or a crocodile is. So that'll help you remember epiphyseal dysplasia. So next, when you look at um, how this is gonna help, reptiles have scaly skin. So what is a human going to present with who has refsum disease? Scaly skin. That's another thing to um, indicate for what's going on with this uh, refsum disease. And then actually the actual cause of this disease. I want, you to rem I want you to think when you remember reptile and then you begin to think, okay, the kind of the strongest reptiles in the water, the crocodile and alligators. I want you to think that these are like the alpha males of the water. The alpha males, you know, like somebody says, kind of an expression. If somebody says you are an alpha male, you're pretty much the strongest 
you know, no one can mess with you. You're the strongest of that species or of, of in that kind of in that environment. So an alpha male of the water should help you remember that this one specifically is altering alpha oxidation. Now the majority of these other ones is messing up beta oxidation of very long chain fatty acids. That's what occurs and and what defines a very long chain fatty acid. So let's go back over to this. A very long chain fatty acid is just going to be a fatty acid with at least 22 or more, I'll say plus, carbons. Now, in this though, in this disease, in Refsum disease, this is altering alpha oxidation, which is, which, uh, is exclusively um, peroxisomal. Like that's the only thing that does alpha oxidation. And if you had your, I'm not going to go into a lot of the detail, but if you have your, um, your fatty acid, remember that the, the first carbon that's coming off is the primary carbon, and then the next one after that is the alpha, and the next one after that is the beta. So beta oxidation would take place on this carbon, alpha oxidation takes place on that, that carbon. So we're specifically talking about alpha oxidation, but of what? Of the fatty acids, phytanic acid. Phytanic acid has, phytanic acid just you know I don't know if you really need to memorize this but it has 20 carbons so that doesn't meet the criteria for a very long chain fatty acid that's why this is dealing with alpha oxidation okay so this has 20 carbons and and it also has a couple I think three or four I think four branch points in this um, fatty acid so it's you can't convert phytanic acid into pristonic acid I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right I'm sorry if I'm not pristonic acid and it can't be done because you can't alpha oxidize in this particular situation. How do you remember phytanic acid? Well, phytanic, if you see an alligator or crocodile, you better get ready to fight. Because this is the alpha male, you could be in danger. So fight would be the thing you, you would you would have to probably try to run. But if you were, say, cornered, you may need to fight it off. So phytanic acid. And this is dealing with alpha peroxidation. How do we remember that? Because this is the alpha male of the water okay so let me make sure I've gotten everything for that one so that covers all of that the primary things to know for that and then the last one is the Weger syndrome or Wedger syndrome I'm not sure the exact pronunciation on this one so this one was very difficult for me to try to think of something to help me remember it but I've come up with this I used to play a lot of medieval games and there was on medieval games there would be a unit on a lot of medieval games that you could make to help defend your say your civilization and they were called zwei handlers zwei handlers and they were called that because they would use a certain type of big two-handed sword called a zwei hander so these were these particular soldiers are called zwei handlers and notice that we're taking this zell wedger and we're, we're remembering it that okay we need to think of zwei handlers that is useful because i i basically then remember that this is the h disease of the peroxisome the h disease now that's because all of the symptoms of zell wedger syndrome start with an h of the primary symptoms there's other ones but the ones that will help you recognize it so let's go through it hepatomegaly that means you're going to have an enlarged liver hepatomegaly okay the next one is hysteria now hysteria in this example I want you to think of something like a neural fit if you're hysteric you're acting kind of out of whack you're you're in a neural fit so this should help you cue you into seizures hysteria stands for seizures here seizures see that so that's an H that's an H there and then the final one that you need to really remember here is hypotonia Remember, hypotonia is kind of like the tone of your muscles is 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 not operating correctly. So the, another name for this, like in babies, would be floppy baby syndrome. Do you remember learning about that? The reason they're floppy, you could basically hold. So if you support them kind of with your stomach and kind of hold them out, you'll notice. I'm sorry, if you hold them from their back, you'll notice that they'll their their muscles will just kind of hang floppy. They won't kind of support themselves as they're being held with your arm. That's called floppy baby syndrome, and you need to be thinking of hypotonia. So what do we have? The H disease, and we know it's H disease because it's, think of Zwei handlers, or using a Zwei hander sword in Zell Wedger syndrome, hepatomegaly, hysteria, hypotonia. The cause of this is just kind of generalized um, PEX gene, PEX gene dysfunction.
And in this one, this one is also um, autosomal recessive. Autosomal recessive. So the one that's different of these three is going to be... So as an entire class, you could say the majority of them... Because there's other diseases. There's there's not just... This is adult refsum disease we're talking about, adult onset. But there's actually an infantile refsum that presents differently. Then there's Zell-Wedger syndrome and there's various kind of degrees of Zell-Wedger syndrome. And then adrenal leukodystrophy, there's an infantile version. And then there's a version you get when you're a little bit older. So for the most part... All of the peroxisomal diseases, or you need to be thinking that they're autosomal recessive, except for adrenal leukodystrophy. That's the primary one to know that that one is X-linked. How do we remember it's X-linked? Because dystrophy is in the word, and the dystrophin diseases, the Becker and Duchenne muscular dystrophy, are X-linked. So if you can remember that, you can remember that this is the one that is going to be X-linked inheritance, primarily in males. That'll help you to cue you into that this is a buildup in the testes, adrenal gland, white matter of the brain. Remember how I said to remember that because it's in the word. Adreno, so adrenal gland, leuco. That's going to help you remember, okay, think of when you hear leuco, leukocytes, those are white blood cells, so this is the white matter of the brain. And then the testes, you can remember that because of it being X-linked inheritance. Refsum disease, we're going to think of the reptile disease, so autosomal recessive, because that's the R, just like the word refsum. When you remember a reptile and think of like an alligator or crocodile, these are the alpha males of the water. So this is alpha, peroxid, um, alpha peroxidation, whereas, I'm sorry, oxidation, whereas all the other ones in this whole category of peroxisomal diseases are beta oxidation um, altering. This one is specifically altering alpha um, oxidation. So what specific, specifically is it going to alter in alpha oxidation? It's going to alter phytanic acid's conversion, which has 20 carbons, into prostanic acid. And how do you remember phytanic acid is being altered? Because when you see a reptile and it's the alpha male of the water, you may be cornered and you may have to fight. So phytanic acid. All of the symptoms go along with the fact that you think of a, when you think of an alligator and you see it kind of at nighttime, you shine lights, they have those red glowing eyes. So think of night blindness. You need to think of ataxia and epiphyseal dysplasia because of their short little stumpy limbs because they're so big, but they have those short limbs so they kind of run sort of funny. And then think of uh, the presentation of scaly skin. That's kind of easy to remember in that. Okay, so this is the video on proxosomal disorders. This has helped me a lot. I hope it helps you as well. If this helped you in any sort of way, please like, subscribe, and share the video, and I will see you in another video. Bye, guys.